Greetings everyone and thank you for taking the time to join me in what will be the second video in a series where we look at some of the actors in Britain's best known soaps. Regular viewers of mine will probably know what to expect. If you're new to my channel, so you can get the most out of this presentation, I make one request, that you proceed with an open mind. Please consider the possibility that the household names found in these soaps may not be as advertised. I make no definite claims. Rather, I present a suspicion I've had for some time. Now, let's remember, it is not uncommon in the world of theatre for one actor to play multiple roles. While social media accounts may reinforce the belief that the names we see in the credits are individual people, I'm suggesting it could be that they themselves are fabricated characters. The common question I get to such claims are, why would they fabricate such a thing? Now I'll tackle that question at the end of the series and I welcome all comments. Please let me know if you think I'm on to sum up or if you think it's way off the mark. I hope you enjoy the series and if you are not already, please subscribe to my channel to catch the future episodes. Enjoy. <laughs> So welcome to the second episode in my investigation into whether there is an actor shortage among ITV and the soaps that they produce. In the first episode, we looked at the characters Phil Sutherland and Phil Whitaker, played by Andrew Wymant, Jamie Kenner, respectively. If you've not seen that yet, the links will be in the description. Before we select the characters for our second look, I would like to say I'm making no conclusions at this stage. I'm presenting this video to back up my suspicion that perhaps some of the actors who work on these soaps are playing more than one role, uh, contrary to what the credits may have us believe. At the end of this series, we will come back and have a look to see, based on some of the feedback I get in the comments, how many hits and misses we've had. That is to say how many we think could be played by the same actor and how many we think are wrong. While I do believe there are other alternatives for some of the things that I'm pointing out in these videos, I'm approaching it in the mindset that they are the same actors, although I am open-minded. At the end of this series, we will see what conclusions we can draw. So in the second episode of the series, we will be looking at the characters Sally Metcalf, previously Sally Webster, played by the actress Sally Dynever, previously Sally Whitaker. Uh, she has been in the soap since 1986 and has been a constant pretty much throughout. We'll also be looking at the character Debbie Webster, who for first appeared two years earlier than Sally in June 1984. Debbie Webster is played by the actress Sue Devaney. Now you may be thinking, hang on what are you talking about? How can these people possibly be played by the same actor? I've seen them in scenes together. While I absolutely concur that these characters do indeed appear in scenes together, I will point out that filming techniques being what they are, bear in mind that this footage we're looking at now comes from November 2020, right in the heart of the time when the bosses of these soaps said they were going to be filming episodes in a socially distant manner, meaning that uh, using camera effects they would make people appear to be in the same room when actually they weren't. Lines could easily be read out by one actor and then they switch them or at least they just switch seats and then play the other role and, and if you believe they couldn't split the film and put the same person twice in one film then you seriously need to research what is capable with even basic video editing technology. In fact this scene is interesting. We'll look at the cut point just before Debbie Webster character leaves the shot. As we see Debbie about to get up out the chair. Look at the very last scene before they cut. Of course they cannot let these two actors' paths appear to cross and the next scene is a picture of Sally Metcalf with what appears to be a face full of plasticine. No disrespect to the actress Sally Devonair, but she has clearly had quite substantial work done on her face and other areas and it is either something as permanent as plastic surgery or they're literally sitting her in a chair and applying makeup and prosthetic. As I said in the previous episode, the makers of these soaps have some of the best prosthetic departments in the business. 
We will have a look at these two characters from when they first came into it. Let's see, this is Debbie Webster's first appearance from June 1984. A couple of years later, and this person appears is in the soap. Would you say that's more than a passing resemblance? I guess you'd have to make your own mind up on that. If we have a look at their IMDB pages, this one for Sally Dynever. See, she first got into acting in 1985 in an episode of Juliet Bravo. She then got a part in The Practice. She then had a part in some Bollywood movie, Ek Alag Morzam, before finally landing a role in Coronation Street in 1986, after which she would be a constant recurring character right up until today. Sue Devaney, on the other hand, who plays Debbie Webster. If you're not familiar with the characters, Debbie Webster is... Sally Webster's ex-husband's sister, so former sister-in-laws. Uh, they do have a common family in the, the soap they play in. Sue Devaney started acting a few years earlier than Sally Dynever. I'm actually looking for dates of birth. Here on the Wikipedia page, we can see Sally Dynever was born on the 30th of May 1963. While Sue Devaney was born in July 1967, making her about four years younger. According to Bing, there is a bit of a height difference between these two characters. Sally Dynever is five foot two, while Sue Devaney is four foot eleven. Apparently, it's actually quite common for the actors that appear on Coronation Street to be well below average height. Apparently, the sets that they act on are all something like two-thirds scales so then all of them are just slightly smaller than real life obviously so they can fit more into the set and perhaps the characters they also look for people who are about four-fifths scale just so things don't look too tiny as always it is nigh on impossible to find in pictures where these two people are doing the same pose Sally Dynevers always got her mouth open in every picture. Sue Devaney is more likely to have closed mouth. Although we have found some. This is the nearest I could mix these two up. We just draw some reference points on this picture. They're not identical poses, so the images aren't lined up perfectly. I've done the best I can, though. Now, I totally agree. These two people have fairly different shaped features. Uh, the most obvious thing on Sally Dynever is the shape of her ears. They are what can only be described as unusual. I do actually wonder if it really is the case that an actor is playing multiple roles. By multiple roles, I mean playing the roles of the actors. Could it be that they literally have to have parts of their body trimmed down so that they can have prosthetics fitted over the top? If you want to make a career out of acting, I think you really would make that sacrifice. You would allow your earlobes and maybe upper ear to be cut off so they can attach a prosthetic ear. I know actors have their teeth removed so that they can have different plates screwed in and out. As you can see with some actors, it appears they have the majority of their jaw removed as well, their chin. Quite often, some of the actors look downright bizarre. And again, I believe that's so face prosthetics can be put in to give the appearance of different shaped face. However, if you do a close up, clearly these two people have different ears trying to line this up as best I can for this example. If we look at this right ear, my thoughts are, if we look at the image of Sue, I'll draw this line just around here. If we turn Sally off, you can kind of see, I believe the top of Sally Dynever's ear, probably prosthetic, meaning this bit round here would just be an add-on. One thing when you they line up better on the left-hand side of this person than on the right, because the head's at a different pose. Now I'll draw a line to see how well the eyes, nose and mouth line up, just to see how the proportions are. As you can see, it, it's a pretty close match in my book. How I would explain the differences in ears, this part of the ear is a prosthetic, and when it's Sue, she still has this same common piece of ear, and anything put on the top above or below that is just makeup, it's just a prop. As I said, actors can change their teeth as and when required. You can also see how the bone structure seems to be a very close match on here. The cheekbones, which are just around here, pretty much 
stay in the same place. They never move at all. Only difference is Sally's face is at a different angle. We do have another comparison picture of these two. Oh, I've lined them up as best I possibly can. You've got Sally with that unusual shaped ear. Pretty much add any shape that they wanted. Her ears are often covered. But yeah, I think they've always looked like that, actually. The flesh around the forehead and eyes are obviously thicker and wider around on Sally here. Just a good bit of plasticine. Sally, Die Never and Sue Devonay. Could they be one and the same or is something else going on? I'm always interested to hear your comments and opinions on the information I'm putting forward. So please share yours in the comment section. Let you know if you think we've got a match or a miss. So we will tick Sally and Debbie off the list and I'll be back again soon with the next episode. Uh, thanks for taking the time to watch this and if you want to see the next episode early then follow me on Patreon. Just a big shout out to my first and only patron, Linda Matt. Much appreciation. If you want to support my videos that I bring out, please consider checking me out on Patreon. Thanks ever so much for watching. Take care.